Yo, what is up guys? So today we are going to be talking about this Skyframe Brigade archetype. Now, I had a bunch of footage that I played during my live stream, some of you guys did see. It was a pretty hype play with Fubrin Kaza against the Lava Golem. It was absolutely awesome, but unfortunately those replays uh, do not work anymore. But shoutouts to Boba5681 for providing me with a bunch of plays that uh, you guys will see here from Skyframe Brigade. Now, obviously, uh, going for the maxi challenge in 2018 is a really bad idea because so many archetypes are going to be OTKing. Now, in this scenario, we're going to be seeing just like all the monsters. And I'll go over all their effects and talk a little bit about this deck, but I really wanted to ask you guys this question, is this deck good? Now, uh, I've played the deck quite a bit, pretty much like one night. I just like just sat down and we grinded a bunch of stuff because I, I wanted to get a bunch of replays and just talk about the deck. But, well, uh, my replays don't work anymore, but Bubba's do, so shouts to you and thanks again, man. But, um... Anyways, basically what the archetype does is it wants to swarm, and the deck is super susceptible to hand traps. All the spell and, tra and trap support as of right now is way too slow. Like, I wouldn't even bother playing them. Desires is a really good card in the deck because it allows you to just kind of get more cards. But the main problem that I have with this archetype is that in order to get it out of the big monsters, you only get really one big monster. So the small monsters can special summon any uh, monster. Um, that they want a special summon, and one can lead into another. So basically, all the level four and unders, when you uh, when you summon another one, oh, during your main phase, you can special summon another Skyframe Brigade monster. So again, this deck loses the hand traps really easy because if you were to say a fad failure, then you were to either well, Ghost Ogre uh, doesn't really shut down the deck too much, with the exception of some plays that the deck would make. But pretty much, it summon one of the cards. Uh, to special summon another card, one of them gets rid of face-ups, uh, one of them gets rid of, well, this one gets rid of set cards, this one gets rid of face-up cards, and it's only when a Skyframe Brigade monster is special summoned. So you can use cards like, uh, Call of the Haunted, you can use cards like Back, uh, no, back to the Front Lines, so you could kind of activate their effects on your opponent's turn. But that's really difficult to activate because, uh, you have to go essentially Nag 1 after you've already exhausted your hand because, the bigger boss monsters of the deck, uh, which are Lafarl and Wiz, uh, which you'll see in probably a second here. Uh, so, you have to get, go minus one, uh, because you have to, as a quick effect, discard one Skyframe Brigade card. Now, Lafarl lets you basically add one, because uh, whenever uh, it is a uh, special summon, you get to excavate cards equal to the number of uh, Skyframe Brigade monsters you control with different names. Usually that's going to be like two to three, or, I mean, at the least, to even summon him, you'll probably need to have one unless you're activating Call of the Hunted or something like that. But uh, you'll be able to proc their effects, and they are kind of a deck that I would say is a win harder deck uh, when he is uh, special summoned. But this is a really good effect to just be able to get anything. But again, you have to go minus one in order to make like these good turn one plays, right? You would just special summon, special summon, special summon this guy, add one. So you'd have like a negate one effect. But then it becomes very difficult in this deck to stop like a Regeki from absolutely destroying you. Like, I feel like a Kaiju or a Regeki completely destroys this deck. Uh, uh, or Dark Hole technically would also work. Uh, there is the Wiz uh, card over here. Now this one lets you get rid of Spell and Traps by discarding a Skyfring Breed card. Which again, you can discard either one of these and then bring it back, therefore adding back the card. Which ideally, uh, you would activate Wiz's effects getting rid of a Spell Trap. But what if a monster effect is activated before? Like, you have that option to negate and get rid of that card, which is, again, part of the problem that this deck has. And I'll get into it in a second, because uh, I think it's a really cool archetype, but it lacks uh, the ability to, like, go into something after your initial play. So, for example, Donpa, as well as the other smaller level 2 win one. Again, uh, one of them gets rid of face-up cards. Uh, Donpa gets rid of face-up cards, and... Um, the other card that's basically reverse, it's the stats are like they're pretty much irrelevant, but I think it's like a thousand attack and 500 defense. Uh, okay, here it is, uh, which is Recon. So uh, Recon gets rid of set cards, Donpa gets rid of face up cards. You don't do anything with them after. Yes, of course, again, uh, mentioning uh, what I was talking about before, where you, if you special summon during your opponent's turn with like Call of the Hunt to return to the front lines, you can activate their effects again which is good, which you guys will see right here. He's going to be activating the effect, and he's going to proc their other effects. Well, uh, Blavel over here, I wish it was it, its effect was infinite, because that would make these cards actually like worth keeping on board, because you don't do anything with them, uh, unless, of course, you're bringing back another card. What I think would really make the deck really strong is an Exceed or a Link Monster, which, I mean, they could definitely get. Uh, at this point, the other guy, GG's. This deck is a very turn-one-oriented deck, 
Like, you either win or losing turn one. I mean, if you guys have played Six Samurais, it reminds me of Six Samurais, although um, they have some potential to, like, be more active during your opponent's turn with Six Samurais is basically she had negate for days, right? That was that's how you interacted. But with this, you have a little bit of play, again, with uh, some of the other stuff that could bring back a monster. But again, I find some of the stuff to be way too slow, which we'll get into in the support uh, that we're not playing in this build. In fact, when I was building the deck, I think we all decided that the support was really bad, like the spell and trap support. The field spell, if it just searched out one card uh, that was like a uh, Skyfing Brigade card, would be absolutely amazing. If it just searched out a monster, it would be super viable and I could see people playing it. But because you have to like place it and then wait one turn during your standby phase, it's like, and, and you lose your draw phase, it's like, I'm not gonna play that card. It's just two minus uh, and it takes too long, uh, essentially is really what it comes down to. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna be, uh, this is the last replay, then I'll, I wanna go into the deck and talk a little bit about it because I was really excited for this deck because it looks really cool. It was the first pirate archetype that we uh, got in Yu-Gi-Oh! And a lot of people wanted a pirate archetype. In fact, I remember some guy asking me, you know, why doesn't Konami make one? Do I, I have no control over what they make as far as uh, suggestions go. I mean, sometimes I can tell them it'll be really cool, but essentially, uh, I mean, there is technically the TCG exclusives. So, and I know people have been asking for pirates for a long time. Have, people have been asking for Crystal Beast support for the longest time too. Uh, I think that that would be super hype. But uh, anyways, you have a little bit of play with like Mannequin Cat, but for the most part, majority of the times that uh, you see this deck, it's not going to be making any exceeds. It's not going to be going for links because you need to keep up Lafaro uh, up on board and you actually need to keep up Wiz. And I was looking at the rank three exceeds in this game and like that are like viable, right? I don't find there to be a viable like rank three monster right now that's in the game. And we'll go ahead and go to the deck edit and we'll talk a little bit about it. So now that you guys have kind of seen like what the deck does um, and basically how the deck works, it's just, it's kind of like a monster spam deck and it invests a lot into a turn one play, which uh, like comes down to like Lafaro being out on board, or you could have Wiz to be on board. But if you draw any of these, these are basically brick cards if you don't have some of the smaller cards. And when you're running like three copies of Call of the Haunted and three copies of Return, you can uh, actually brick a lot. However, you do happen to have Beat Swordsman. And this card, uh, actually, let me go over all their effects real briefly and we'll talk a little about them. Uh, so anyways, Lafaro, when it's summoned, you excavate up to the number of Skyfang uh, Brigade monsters you control. It should have been Skyfang cards because that would actually include uh, perhaps this card if they, I don't know if it's a TCG name, name swap, but if this happened to like count as a card, it would just like help out the deck quite a bit. Um, but we'll talk about the other support in a second. But uh, anyways, yeah, he just lets you basically add one uh, card. So it makes him going minus, like it neutralizes that uh, as a quick effect where you get to negate a uh, monster effect. And that's during either player's turn. I feel like he's probably the better card to make. And again, you have Wiz over here. As another effect, one special, you need 500 life points for each Skyframe Brigade monster. It's small, but it can, can beat certain things. Like if we're playing against Trick Stars, it can, that, that can actually be a huge deal. Uh, but Anyways, uh, when they activate a spell trap, you can stop it, but you have to discard one Skyfiend Brigade card, which this card does not give you. Uh, so that's kind of the problem I have with Wiz. If Wiz instead just like added one or searched one or added one from, I don't know, not, not even, because like, Gra Graveyard is just too minus already. Uh, that's just the, that's how I feel about Wiz. I just, I just really didn't like her for the most part. But if you don't run her, you're super susceptible to Dark Hole. But these monsters can only be brought out and then like your play stops because the uh, every monster that's four or under as of right now, um, they have that effect where during your main phase you can summon one extra uh, Skyfang monster. Uh, but the bigger ones don't allow you to do that. So basically, you're stuck with do I make Wiz turn one or do I make Lafaro? If you make Lafaro, then uh, you are super susceptible to Dark Hole because more than likely you've activated a few of their effects and you summoned like two to three and th at that point your investment is like four cards but you can't really utilize this you get dark hold you have like a skyframe brigade monster in your hand and you have like maybe a set one card right and that's the problem that i think that this deck has competing with the game it's not a bad deck don't get me wrong i think it just needs a lot of improvement it really needs a uh, better spell and trap support and or and or a link and exceed monster because a lot of times you just leave with Donpa and um, the Recon Scout and they just do absolutely nothing. If you happen to have like a, if they had like a quick effect, right? If there is a quick effect like uh, Exceed or Link Monster where you could just use like two of them on your board and just instantly just go into it on your opponent's turn, oh, this deck would be absolutely amazing. And I think that that's something they would add in the future. That, at least that's my thoughts um, on what the deck has coming for. Because as of right now, it, it's it's very new. It only has uh, a few cards. Uh, we're talking like, uh, let's see, it's, it's like one spell. Okay, let me extra type in Sky Fang. Yeah, they have a total of nine cards under 10. So I'm sure that we'll get something later down the line. 
But uh, anyways, uh, Blabo, he boosts everything by 500. And keep in mind, that's when another Sky Fang is special summoned. It's going to gain that effect. It doesn't just gain that effect immediately, unlike uh, how Six Sam's kind of work. Um, where it's just like you control another one. This one is like when it's summoned is when you're going to be getting it. And it's only 500 attack and defense until the end of the turn. If it was uh, a lot longer, I could see him being more viable, but pretty much not. It's, let's be honest. It's, it, it, the small boost lets this guy run over 3,000, which is actually quite an important stat. But for the most part, like... Uh, you're not going to proc its effect multiple times. I wish it was forever, the 500 boost, and then uh, he'd be much more viable. But uh, Beat Sword was probably one of the best cards. It just searches out anything. Um, you could add one Sky Fang Brigade Monster. Uh, and then, like, we're running Hand Traps and, like, Triple Cops and pretty much everything in this build. There's a really cool card that I'll talk about in this Maxi. There's, like, standard stuff. Uh, nothing too special here. Uh, this is not necessarily for a deck profile. It's just more so I want to talk about, you know, the archetype. Is it actually good? And I think it has a lot of problems right now. For the extra deck, there's not really anything that like stands out to me that, oh, you gotta make that card in that deck. Uh, now, I'll go over the spell and traps before, because like I said, I feel like it's way too slow. So, Dragon Airship Fandra over here. Uh, during your draw phase, before you draw, you can give up your normal draw, so that means you lose your draw. And if you do, you get to add one Skyfring Brigade monster from your deck to your hand. But, if you control five or more Skyfring Brigade monsters with different names, you can send this card to the grave to destroy all cards your opponent controls. And also your opponent takes no damage for the rest of the turn. So like, I don't even know why you'd want this in the first place. So yes, you get to destroy everything, but if you have five or more, right? As right now we have one, two, three, four... It's, it's the same with different types, right? Or with different names. Okay, so uh, theoretically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There, there's seven total. Okay. But the thing is, is that like, this already, this can basically deal with one card. Both of these deal with one card each, anyways. And the uh, the other cards, like Donpa as well as Recon, they deal with, like, one card each, anyways. So if you had all, like, five of them, like, you probably would just pop those cards anyways, right? Uh, but on top of that, you can't even deal battle damage for the rest of the turn. So, like, I just, I find it to be mediocre for that other effect. It's like, well, you can go for game, oh, but you can't. Like, you just got rid of everything. Yeah, I know sometimes if you activate it, your opponent's top decking, they're losing anyways, but if you've controlled five, how have you not already, like, established control and already have, like, gained huge advantage? Why would you want to activate that effect? Uh, but the add effect is just way too slow. It needs to search out immediately, or, like, if this card was destroyed and it got that effect, if, it, if this card was sent to the graveyard, because then you could destroy your own, and then this would make it much better uh, if it was like, if this card destroyed, search out like a Sky Fang Brigade monster. And again, the whole deck loses to Hand Trap. If you get Valored, like, what do you do? If you get Ghost Ogre at like the wrong time, well, you lose. If you get Max Seed, well, it's kind of difficult because in, a lot of times, like, you gotta activate your effects, otherwise you don't get your searches, you don't get like the, the pop ones, and it, it negates all of your like free advantage with the deck. At least that's the way I see it. But, um,. Yeah, I feel like that the, the Dragon Ship is just 2 out of 10. Uh, now, the Brigade Training is interesting. So, if a Skyfring Brigade monster you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can target one of those uh, monsters, special on one Skyfring Brigade monster from your deck, with a level less than uh, that monster's original level, you can only use this effect of it once per turn. So, majority of the time, uh, when, you, when you're using this card, it has to be face up. So, that, that's like one problem. It's really slow, continuous. Uh, obviously, your opponent can change stuff to it, so that's kind of unfortunate, but, uh, like, this guy doesn't go into anything. Basically, um, it allows, it's supposed to allow you to do something during your opponent's turn, like, oh, special minute, okay, I'm gonna activate all their effects, but the problem is, is it has to be lower. If it was, like, higher or just special on one, this card would see some play, but I've seen so many different builds of Skyframe Brigades, and, like, none of them play the Spell and Trap support. I've, I've seen people try. Uh, they try the Fandra, but like it just it just does not work. And in fact, I think the last video someone like tried to activate it. It's way, way, way too slow. You go way too minus hand traps for days just stop uh, this deck from being relevant in that aspect uh, with the this these support cards. I think you could run the deck without it. In fact, uh, this was the build that I was oops, we were messing around with a lot of different builds. This was the Furin uh Furin Kazan build. This is my favorite build. It's more hype than anything, and like I said, I had a really a bunch of really cool replays, but uh, leave it to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro to, well, they updated the card, so it just unfortunately doesn't work. Uh, but, uh, when there is a face of wind, water, fire, and earth monster on the field, you get to apply one of these effects. So you get to either regeki your opponent, uh, destroy all monsters your opponent controls, destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls, discard two random cards from your opponent's hand, or draw two cards. This card is absolutely amazing. It's never dead uh, when, when when you have it like in a usable state, meaning if 
you know, you have all the elements, which is not the most difficult thing to do. Let me get rid of some of these cards, because we were trying out a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, I, I spent, like, almost one night just playing this deck and just slamming games out and trying to get footage, but... Um, anyways, you have this. So this is your Earth. This searches out any of the other elements, right? So this plus, like, this, and then, like... As long as you have, like, two cards, right? Two cards plus this, you're going to get searched out to the last piece. And then you have four different of uh, the elements. And then you can either, you know, delinquent duo them. These are all banned effects, by the way. It's either you get to get rid of all... It's either... Re well, Regeki is technically legal now. But it's either, like, Regeki. Uh, and it's really, really cool that you have that effect. Because, like you said, once you uh, have, like, the conditions met, like, your opponent can't, like, make you go two minus with this, is what I'm trying to say. Like, if they... Um, have a monster effect in their strike, you can just, like blow up their board. Like, and it's so good just to make your opponent just discard two random cards out of their hand. That's huge, huge. I mean, Delinquent Duo is banned for a reason. Uh, but that's actually one of my favorites. I love the effect of like, oh, you attack, okay, surprise trap Regeki. But it almost is at the end of the day kind of like Mirror Force, but um, it does have the aspect you can activate it at any time, which is really, really nasty. Because it's like, oh, you're going to go for a Link's play. Oh, I know you're going to be making a card that's going to stop some other play that I'm going to do, so I'm going to go ahead and Regeki your board. Really good stuff, uh, but overall, again, I feel like the deck lacks a lot of things, but that's my thoughts on the deck. I just wanted to make this video because uh, I like the archetype, I like the pirate archetype, but it just seems to need something else because, again, like a lot of times you leave these on the board and you just don't get value if you don't have, like, uh, I was running three of these. I think this was, okay, I guess I was running a different build. I didn't. I actually ended up dropping these and uh, we tried to call the Hondas, like, it was Brick City, though. Uh, for the most part, but I think the deck needs something where you can just special summon it during your opponent's turn And then the deck has a lot more potential uh, again If they got a link monster and exceed monster it would just help out It has to be like rank 2 though because there's only like two that you're gonna actually have up on board Because well, that's just how the deck works and I was looking at like, you know rank 2 exceeds and like god She's just like it's just outclassed it's outdated really is what it comes down to but who knows, maybe they'll get some support that actually, again, is stuff that I mentioned before. But as of right now, I think the core monsters are the only thing you can run. These two cards are just way too slow for the game. But you guys can let me know your thoughts down below. And that's Sky Phoenix in a nutshell. I really wanted to uh, get your guys' opinions on it. Because I like the idea of this deck. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's just not going to see any play if this is all we get. Obviously, it's going to get new support, so we'll have to wait and see how good it becomes. But again, the deck just loses the hand trap, and it's just... You can't get out both of these monsters. Again, that's another problem with the deck. Like, you special, 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 and then you summon this guy, you add one, and then you go, okay, pass. And then they go Dark Hole, and then you're like, okay, I wish I summoned this, but you can't summon both of these. Normally. Like, you'd have to, like... Twin Twisters discard a card and then like have another card set, but then at that point if you're using like something to discard, what well, which this card can do, but again, if you're relying on that then you can just lose to Dark Hole. But if you have like a, a, a one a discard, right, and then like maybe one 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 or two monsters to special summon, special summon, summon this, or maybe search out one, and then you go for this, and then you're also trying to get out this, it's just, it's too much, like you can't get out both, and that's again the part, part of the problem, but if it gets it, I think this deck has a lot of potential and it could easily be a tier 1 deck. Uh, in the future. We'll have to wait and see though. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Let me know your thoughts on Skyfangs down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content.